Hey everybody, so in this video, we're talking about transformations of exponential functions. So we are given some parent graph and they want us to graph this exponential function and then talk about its key characteristics. Now, this graph here that is dotted is the parent function of this graph. So if I'm looking at this, its parent function would just be three to the x. So this is what's plotted. And then what we're going to do is we're going to graph this transformation of this parent function, talk about its differences, and then we'll write out its key characteristics. So over here to the right, what I've done is I've just copied and pasted a table from Desmos so that we would have values to plot. So here at zero, we're going to go up to 1.5. So zero, we're at 1.5. One, we're going to go up to 2.5, 2.5 right in here. Two is five and a half, five and a half. And then three, uh, we kind of get off the grid here because that's at 14 and a half. So that's really tall. Uh, negative one is just above one. And then negative two is almost at one entirely. So we know there is going to be some horizontal asymptote at positive one. So here, let me draw a solid line at one. And then this graph would get infinitely close to that line and follow our pattern and go up like so. So here, notice what's happened. This plus one has moved our blue graph one position up from its parent function. The one half is now making our blue graph here accelerate at half the speed or roughly half the speed, right? So if I would look at the Y value of one, if you looked at the parent function, the Y value at one would be three, where at one, we were at two and a half. And then if you looked at the Y value of two, three squared is nine, ours is, you know, five and a half. So this one half is slowing down the acceleration of our parent function. So that's why it looks like this. Now, our domain, our domain is still going to be all real numbers. And if you're using interval notation, we're going to say negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, our range exponential functions move in one direction. So when I say one direction in regards to the range, we're talking about moving up or moving down. So exponential functions do not go up and down. So here we notice that if we start from the left, we are incredibly close to positive one, but we are getting larger and larger and larger and larger as we move to the right. So our range here is going to be greater than one, or we would say in interval notation, one to positive infinity. Your y-intercept is anytime the x value is zero, so that's going to be 1.5. Please make sure when you're doing your y-intercept, you are writing this as a coordinate point you must include that x is zero, y is 1.5. You have to put it in the parentheses because the y-intercept, we are looking for a coordinate point. Our asymptote, one neat trick with exponentials, whatever this last number is, your k value, if you were looking at it in standard form, is always going to be your asymptote. So here, it is going to be y equals one, the asymptote is always written as an equation. So if it's a horizontal line, then we would say y equals. If it is a vertical asymptote, we would say x equals. In behavior, this always seems to throw people off. So the in behavior, as x moves to positive infinity, all that means is look to the right of your graph. As I move to the right, the y values are doing what? So let's start here at zero, all right? So here are my y values. I'm starting at 1.5. As I move to the right, my y values are increasing. They're getting larger. So the further I move to the right, then the larger the y value becomes. So if I moved infinity to the right, the y values are moving to infinity. And then what happens is I move to the left. So if I start at zero and I move to the left, my y values are getting infinitely close to the number one, right? The y values are approaching the horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's look at another example. So here in this problem, 
our, remember, the dotted line here is the parent function of what we're given. So the parent function here would be 3 halves to the x. All right, this would be our parent function. Here, we're going to plot this transformation. So let's see what happens. At negative four, or excuse me, at positive four, we're at negative four. So positive four, we're at negative four. Five, we're at negative three and a half. Six, we're at negative 2.75. And these values, as I move to the left, would seem to be getting closer and closer to negative five. So remember, this is always going to be our horizontal asymptote. So let's draw a straight line on negative five. And these values are going to increase as I move to the right, and they're going to get infinitely close to negative five as I move to the left. So from our parent graph, we can see what happened. This minus four moved these values four places to the right. The minus five moved them five places down. So you see how I have zero, one, this same dot is one, two, three, four places over and one, two, three, four, five places down. So here we have our horizontal movement and here we have our vertical movement. So our domain, our domain here, again, with all exponential functions is going to be all real numbers, or we can say negative infinity to infinity. Our range is going to go up from our horizontal asymptote. So here we're getting infinitely close to five, but as I move to the right, I'm getting infinitely larger. So here it is going to be greater than negative five. And if I'm using interval notation, then I am going to say negative five to infinity. My y-intercept is anytime x is zero. Remember, this is always going to be a coordinate point. So this is negative 4.8. Our asymptote will always be our vertical shift. So our asymptote is horizontal. We do need to say y equals negative 5. And then the end behavior. Start at 0. As I move to the right, what are the y values doing? As I move to the right, these y values are increasing. They're going to infinity. As I move to the left, my y values are getting closer to negative 5. They will always be approaching that horizontal asymptote. All right, last example. So here our parent function is going to be 4 to the x. And then here we have this transformation. So this will be our example working with a negative coefficient right here. So let's notice what that does to the graph. So here at zero, we're at negative 0.1. So we're incredibly close right about here. One, we're at negative a half. So one, negative one half, a little bit further down. Two, we're at negative two. Three, we're at negative eight. And it keeps going from here. So there is no plus K. There is no plus or minus some number. So that means I have a horizontal asymptote at zero, just like my parent function. So here I will draw a horizontal line. And it appears that my exponential function is going down and getting infinitely close to zero here. Now look what the negative did. The negative made it flip. So this negative gave us a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, my domain, once again, the graph does go forever left and forever right. So we do have all real numbers, interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. My range here, so my, my, y, my graph is going down. So my y values are decreasing and they never really seem to make it past zero or even to zero for that matter. So it is going to be y is less than zero or we could say negative infinity to zero. Now notice how my range was different on this example. The negative infinity is first. Domain, you are always looking left to right the range we are always looking from the bottom to the top. 
So for if I'm coming from the bottom, this is negative infinity and I'm getting infinitely close to zero. Remember the Y intercept needs to be a coordinate point when X is zero. So that would be zero negative 0.125. My asymptote will be whatever the plus K value is. So plus or minus. So here we don't have one. So that is going to be zero. So here I would say Y equals zero. The end behavior, start at zero and look to the right. If I start at zero and look to the right, what's the graph doing? It's going down. So my Y values are approaching negative infinity. Start at zero, look to the left. What are my Y values doing? They're getting closer to zero. And that would be my end behavior. All right, that's gonna be all for this video. I hope that these few examples helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll see you all in the next video.